Hey, Vegeta. I think I'm a Super Saiyan. Oh. Yes, Nappa. Yes, you are. Hey, guys. DB right here, back with another What If, and today I am continuing with What If Nappa Survived. And it's been quite the um, interesting journey for our favorite tall, muscly, bald-headed Saiyan. Well, for in this timeline, rather than Vegeta disposing of him when Goku breaks his back with the Kaioken, Vegeta actually decides to spare his um, comrade's life. After all, you, know, you can't just waste precious Saiyan potential like that. And not to mention, you know, it is a line that even Saiyans don't cross, killing their own. Although I suppose um, King Vegeta's done that occasionally. I seem to recall him wiping out a wiping out um, a member of his royal court. But anyway, that might not be canon, so forget I said that. Anyways, continuing where we left off, Nappa had reached Super Saiyan after witnessing Vegeta meet his end at the hands of Frieza, and. Nappa pretty much done away with the Emperor, whether or not, and after, well basically after that was taken care of, Nappa decides to fly off in search of King Cold and to, um, you know, get rid of every other last stain of Lord Freezer. And meanwhile, back on planet Earth, everyone has been returned safely, um, um Goku, Vegeta, everyone is back on Earth, and they're using the the Mechians are staying with um, Bulmer and Capsule Corp while they wait for the Dragon Balls to um, to be reawakened, and they're able to move on to a new planet. And well, meanwhile, Vegeta is um, shocked that um, Nappa was able to turn. Super Saiyan and Vegeta wants to learn how to do it himself, so he does what he does in the anime. Instead of uh, chasing after Goku, he's chasing after his sub subordinate Nappa. <laughs> after all, I'm pretty sure Nappa would be more than happy to teach the prince Super Saiyan. After all, he is Vegeta's subordinate. Oh, if he doesn't, I'll do Oh, wait, he's a Super Saiyan. <laughs> all right. Now, meanwhile, in space, Nappa is not having much luck finding King Cold at the moment. As well, King Cold's actually doing some space traveling on his own, looking for his son, Freezer. So, I guess really, in a way, they sort of passed each other, but didn't really notice, I guess. And, well... But that doesn't stop Nappa, you know, taking out his frustrations on um, other members of, um, of remnants of the Freezer Force and the Cold Force. So Nappa pretty much laying those facilities to waste, as well as um, liberating a planet or two. And, well, Vegeta sort of coolly on where Nappa was going when he, took, when, he, um, when he learned that Nappa took off in a bit of a rage. Vegeta is actually on his trail and does indeed manage to find his old buddy and um, um, at this point Nappa has begun to be able to transform into a Super Saiyan willingly so he's able to give the prince some pointers on where to go in order to transform and that it, it takes uh, a sense of loss and anger and rage to <coughs> in order to, the, to unlock the transformation. Now, as we know, Vegeta is actually strong enough to pull off the transformation himself. He just lacks the motivation. And while he's trying to figure out how to do that, he's more than happy to accompany Nappa while they um, take out other Freezer Force and Cold Force and, and members of the Cold Force. So, I guess you could say Nappa is having a new best day ever. And well, with that, with that, yeah, they're just having a lot of fun 
liberating planets and just getting wiping out the stain of Frieza once and for all. And well, news about this is getting to King Cold, and yeah, he's not a happy chappy. <laughs> Alright, now meanwhile, back on Earth, things of arms um, seem to have quieted down a little bit on Earth, except that a certain former adversary of Goku and specifically Piccolo and Kami has just reared his short ugly head. I am talking about of course Garlic Jr. Garlic Jr. has escaped the dead zone thanks to the help of the Makio Star, his source of power, and of course he intends to conquer Earth with help of his um, new lackeys, the Spice Boys, Salt, Mustard, Vinegar and Spice. And with that, the Garlic Jr. saga pretty much plays it as per normal, except with the uh, addition that Goku is here. And is Goku affected by the Black Water Mist? No, he's not. Remember, Goku is actually completely pure of heart. He has no evil within him, as we we learned that during the whole Fortune Teller Barber saga in Dragon Ball with the with the um. Of that guy who does the devil might beam. So yeah, the Blackwater Mist actually has no effect on Goku, and Goku's having to um sort of restrain a now violent Chi Chi, and um Gohan and Krillin managing to escape just like they do. And um Yeah, and Piccolo also entering the fray and he gets um you know bitten by by Bulma, Chi Chi, and all the others who have been possessed by the Black Water Mist. And Piccolo, you know, Piccolo turns evil. And well, with that, pretty much things within the Garlic Jr. front go on as per normal with the addition of Goku, who is pretty much cleaning house when they eventually arrive at the lookout to face Garlic Jr. Well, the only downside to um, Goku's Battle of Garlic Jr. is the fact that Garlic Jr. is immortal, and it is um, putting the the battle in more or less an even playing field. And well, after that, you know, Piccolo joining the fight too, um, pretending to work for the bad guys, and just like in the original, he pretends to bite Krillin, and he also manages to get a hold of Goku, pretend and basically he spills all that he's only pretending and tells them just look just act like you possess attack Gohan and once we get in close we can release Kami and Popo and well more or less the um, plan works if not even more easily than it does in the original and Mr. Popo and Kami are on their way to get the um I forget the name of the water, the sa is it the sacred water? I think so. Someone like that. Anyway, to um, undo Garlic Jr's spell before the effects become permanent. And with that, the rest of the saga pretty much goes on per normal. Kami's able to convince the previous Guardians to let him through, and he does release the um, water that flushes out the, um, the, black, wa the black water mist. And well, with that, everyone is pretty much restored to normal. Why do I feel like when I said Blackwater Mist, I, I feel like I'm quoting Naruto. Hmm. Anyways, so with that, everyone is released as per normal, and Goku deals a final Kamehameha, destroying the Makyo Star and sending Garlic Jr. back into the dead zone from once he came. The only difference is, Goku actually managed to break the Super Saiyan barrier when he destroys destroys the Makio star. It was the sort of the last chance, Goku getting a bit frustrated and raging up. No one messes with my family! Kamehameha! And with that Kamehameha, Goku breaks the um, Super Saiyan barrier, like he should have done back in the Frieza saga, but hey, this is a what if. And well, after that, 
everything pretty much returns to normal and this is where um, Vegeta and Nappa come back just prior to the arrival of King Cold and someone else. Frieza isn't dead. And well, as for Vegeta, has he broken the Super Saiyan yet? Uh, broken into Super Saiyan yet? Not quite yet, and he's uh, pretty annoyed to hear that Goku has done it as well. Huh. First by, first by supported it, and now that lower class dog Kakarot. What am I doing wrong? And well, after um, sort of settling in, this is when they sense the really huge power level heading, or power levels heading for the planet. God damn it, Nappa! You screwed up. Freezer is not dead, and this time, he's brought his father along for the ride. Ah, sorry Vegeta, I guess I got too carried away back then and didn't make sure the job was actually finished. Oops. Oh yeah, oops is right. You should have that Super Saiyan power, Nappa. It belongs to me. At least I would screw it up. And well, with that, King Cold and Freezer land on the planet, just like they do in the original. The entire Dragon Team assembles and goes to um, meet up with Lord Freezer and... And I think that's actually where we're going to leave things for right now. So what did you guys think? Did you enjoy this edition of What If Nappa Survived? Uh, did, you, did you like the whole Vegeta and Nappa going around wiping out Freezer full of soldiers? Nappa trying to teach Vegeta how to go Super Saiyan. Though, mind you, Nappa's not exactly the best teacher. <laughs> and, um, yeah, how things going to differ with, um, you know, Cyborg Freezer and King Cold now heading, now speeding their way towards the planet, and both of them beginning to exact revenge on those monkeys. Freezer for what the Saiyans did to him on Namek, and King Cold for what Nappa and Vegeta have done to his empire. So yes, all this and more in the next What If. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys again next time for more What Ifery.